Moving on to number two, I want to give you a demonstration of my architecture that I use in this particular application. Now, a couple things. I don't follow one single architecture. My architecture um, adjusts to the project requirements, which is another way of saying that I let the project requirements or the requirements of the specific UI feature or screen that I'm working on tell me what kind of software architecture I should use. Um, in a simple one, sometimes I can get away with just MVP. Sometimes I can get away with MVVM. In a complicated UI, and you know what, my general approach is something like this. I have both a uh, presenter, I call it a logic class, presentation logic, but you know, presenter applies, and a view model. And the view, if I can zoom in here, still observes the view model. So again, the view model is not allowed to have a dependency to the view and nor a dependency to the presenter. The view forwards click events to the presentation logic and the presentation logic functions as a decision maker. I don't want my view model to be a data container, a data cache and a decision maker unless there is almost zero decisions to make. And I feel like this is where most people have trouble with model view view model and it's not their fault. They're told that you can um, do model view view model and you're not going to need a separate class to handle presentation logic. And if you are in a feature or an application which has complicated presentation logic, I simply don't agree. I prefer to pull it out into a separate class. You can build a giant view model, a thing which is supposed to be modeling the view, so storing the data necessary to render the user interface full of logic. You can do that and you can call it a view model, but the name view model doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you do that. But I, I'm not crapping on MVVM specifically. I think it's a great idea. I love the idea of the view observing something like a front-end uh, cache for UI data. And sometimes the presenter gets to ask the view model for data as well. And that's pretty handy instead of having the presenter ask the view for the data, which you can't easily do that in Compose in particular. Because of course, Compose, in Compose we're working with functions, top-level functions. Um, there's a few other elements to this thing. So we have build logic. This is basically dependency injection service locator type stuff. You don't need to use Hilt or Dagger. You can if you want to. In a small application, I'm going to say pretty bluntly that unless you're practicing to learn how to use Dagger 2 or Hilt or whatever you want to use, then it's totally pointless. It's a waste of time and dex size. Um, you can write the code that these tools will do for you um, really simply. It, it's literally just the code required to build things. Um, and you can get all the benefits of dependency injection or whatever you want to call that inversion of control by doing that. However, again, when a project becomes quite large, over time, this kind of code becomes more tedious for the programmer to write. And that's when I do think it's a good idea to look into a framework to handle dependency injection. Um, not really going to talk about domain model. That's a confused term. Um, but I will point out that I have a domain layer in this application, um, which is a pretty typical thing you'll, you'll see in uh, clean architecture. It holds repository interfaces, but not repository implementations. And these things actually function as use cases in a smaller application. Um, you don't need use cases or interactors or whatever in a small application if all they do is call one single um, a data source, like a database or a, a retrofit. Um, you can, it's just kind of pointless. Instead, you can use an interface and be in a small, simple application, this will save you time. Um, in a larger application, yes, I do use interactors or use cases or whatever the heck you want to call them. Um, so yeah, you've got that, I've got that stuff going on. And then this is something I just do all the time, a front-end contract interface. 
I didn't really do it so much in this particular application because uh, it wasn't so necessary, but when I wasn't working in Compose, I tended to use a lot of front-end contract interfaces for the view, the view model, and the presenter. But like I say, in Kotlin with function types, you can be a little less specific about that kind of thing. Um, but I do still have an interface for the activity, which functions as a container. And notice, yes, I am using activities, uh, but I'm not filling them full of code. They've got exactly the kind of thing you would expect a UI container to do. So they bind, they set up the um, composables, they build, uh, they wire up the logic class, although I've, here you can see I've brought the, uh, the actual logic required to do that into a separate top level function, which is my sort of handwritten dependency injection type deal. Um, and it's a natural place to create the view model and I can pass that into the composable. But again, it doesn't really make a lot of decisions. Um, in fact, ideally it doesn't make any decisions. It just gets told what to do by the logic class. The only other thing uh, uh, to point out here, what is the view interaction? In basically every application I've written for a long time, uh, you will find a sealed class or something in Java I would use uh, enums um, wrapped by a, uh, a class. Um, you'll find uh, a sealed class which for each part of the UI or each primary UI screen, it will uh, model those different interactions using a sealed class. So this is a Sudoku game, pardon me, and I'll take you through an example with it with the emulator if my computer can handle it. This is a Sudoku game. So we have all the different ways in here that the user can interact with the game. Inputting a number, uh, clicking on a tile, um, when the user wants to start a new game, and also some life cycle events on start and on, st on stop, which are actually callbacks that the, uh, oops, give me the activity. Um, the activity will actually signal those. On start tells the logic class, okay, we're ready to go, get the data. And on stop tells the logic class, okay, time to shut things down. So that's my general approach to architecture. It does change from time to time. And um, you can use whatever you like. Uh, as I just hope you're using some kind of an architecture.